Good morning. Good morning, everyone. If you are used to using the Demio platform, can you just give us a quick thumbs up or let us know you can hear us? Perfect. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm sure by now most of you have been to some other webinar in the past. You're well familiar with Demio. We are going to leave um, mics and cameras off for now, just while everyone's still logging in. Um, but if you do want to say something or ask questions later, just let us know and Braden can un, uh, unmute you, give you a little bit, bit of the power. All right, maybe give it a minute. Yeah, we'll give it another minute or so. I think from those who registered, we're waiting on about eight, seven. Okay. Yeah, we'll give it another minute there. And I apologize for everyone who has uh, who can see the presentation. There is going to be that bar across the top there. I'm trying something new with different screens going on here today. So um, in all of my troubleshooting, this is as best as I could get for now. So hopefully for next time, we'll get it sorted. <laughs> All right. Ready to roll? Let's do it. All right. Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is well rested and ready to jump into Mission Nutrition this morning. Uh, my name is Brayden Lasecki. I'm a health promotion specialist at CFE Borden. Um, and then alongside with me today, well, beside me, is uh, Jacqueline Pritchard. So, you Pritchard. So, and she's a health promotion specialist from Borden as well. Um, so we'll be taking you through Mission Nutrition today, but along with that, we are doing a six-part series from uh, health promotion specialists from board and specifically over the next six weeks. So next week, for example, will not be Jackie and myself, but two members from our team, um, Jess and Nat, will be along with you for that one. Um, so to introduce the presentation, good morning. Um, we are doing Mission Nutrition. Some bases do call this program Weight Wellness. Um, I've heard Nutrition 101 been used before. I think there's a few others surrounding body size or something like that. Um, so very dependent on what base you are at. Um, we'll use different titles for this, but generally the same consistent information across the board. It is evidence-based information um, that we're, we're teaching you. Um, so we'll jump into it. Um, with that being said, we are not healthcare professionals. Um, we are health promotion specialists. So we'll try our best to answer any questions you have, but please know that we probably won't have all the answers to every single question. Um, as well, there might be questions that are more suited for healthcare professionals instead of ourselves. Um, and we'll just field those as we come. Um, with that being said, the chat bar is open for any questions at any time. Uh, if Jackie's talking, I'll monitor that chat box, and if, if uh, I'm talking, she'll monitor it. Um, so if any questions, any time, and we, if we don't get to them, we'll get to them at the end. All right, so with that being said, next slide, yeah. Uh, before we get started, there are some kind of overarching uh, things that we need to say in all of our presentations. So this slide deck and the information within this slide or presentation is part of DND. So um, any kind of using it externally again or recording it is forbidden. Um, it will be available to you afterwards on CAC Connection. So if you wanna go back and rewatch it or if there's something you missed and wanna go back, absolutely feel free to do so. Um, just go that route. As well, some of the topics today we will discuss are gonna be of a sensitive nature. We're talking about nutrition, but we're also talking about fad diets and why diets don't work. So with that being said, please use parental discretion with this. Um, you know, use headphones or, or go to a different room where the kids aren't present just because it is of a sensitive nature today. Um, and lastly, uh, please be mindful that 
this is being recorded. It will be uploaded on CAF Connection afterwards. So if you do want to come on the chat, that's great. Um, if you want to jump on in, in person, we can unlock your screen and, and mic. Um, just be mindful that it will be recorded. Um, and then again, available on CAF Connection afterwards. So our outline for the day. So today we're going to go through three to four main areas. So as this is the first Mission Nutrition series of uh, CFB Borden what, that we're doing, um, we'll be taking you through kind of a, an introduction to what Mission Nutrition is, whether it be at our base or whether we're doing it right now. So what it will look like over the next six weeks. Um, and it's okay if you jump into this one and then miss a couple and come back in. Um, we're allowing that flexibility, of course. Um, but we just want to go over kind of the introduction to why we need this program, what the benefits are, what the benefits of healthy eating are, and, and why we're here today. Um, next, we'll be going through the Canadian Food Guide, our Canada's Food Guide. So the Canadian Food Guide changed a few years ago. Um, now there's kind of this two prong. We're using some of the old, some of the new. Um, so we'll be going through that and explaining that in a little more depth and going beyond just healthy eating. So in addition to healthy eating, what should we be eating? How should we be cooking it? Who should we be eating with? All these things are now playing a part in Canvas Food Guide um, and we'll, we'll address those. And then kind of lastly is why diets don't work. So we're gonna be talking about um, those fad diets or those yo-yo diets that we often hear in the media. Often you have to pay a price associated with it to join. Um, and they make these promises of, you know, huge weight loss for improvement, um, uh, crazy, like lose 10 pounds in 10 days kind of vibe. Um, so we'd be talking about that and those quick fixes to weight loss, whether it be weight loss or weight gain, whatever your, your desire is, or just maintaining a healthy weight. Um, we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about some ways in which, or tips in which you can kind of still adapt a healthy lifestyle without that traditional diet sense and move more towards behavior modification or using um, lifestyle changes for the longevity of your life. So it's not just a quick fix anymore, it's changes to now uh, use throughout your life to make sure you're living that healthy life. And I'm not gonna say there's homework, um, but we'll be touching on some things, some notes that you can use over the next week until we meet again on next Tuesday. Um, that you can kind of build on and kind of challenge yourself at um, and, and kind of address those as well. So introduction, I have a poll here. So the poll will pop up, it's um, who has taken a mission nutrition or weight wellness course before? So I just wanna get a sense of who has seen this platform in a, in a certain way before or not. Um, I know every base is gonna be different, but. All right. So a few people have taken Mission Nutrition before, that's awesome. Um, quite a few have not, which is completely fine. Um, I might just talk about kind of how maybe Gordon does Mission Nutrition in the past to get you a better sense of, um, you know, how we can make sure that we're sorry, making behavior change happen over this time. So over the next six weeks. So at Borden, we do, uh, usually it's about a six session, uh, four to six sessions with the same people every session. So if you join, you're joining for that six sessions where we introduce you know, all the content that we'll be talking about with you over the next six weeks. Um, but we also involve physical activity with our fitness and sport instructors and our reconditioning specialists. So they teach you the basics about physical activity. Uh, next week, Jess and Nat uh, will be talking to you about physical activity and maybe get you thinking about those things as well. Um, we also have uh, fitness, fitness and sport coming on as well on our platforms, on our online platforms. We do have workouts that you can do and modify daily. Um, to do alongside this course. Um, in addition, we also usually offer Fitbits or pedometers, some uh, bases have, uh, that you can monitor your steps for the day, check your physical activity. So we encourage you to uh, add that into your weekly routine as well. 
um, and we'll touch more on that in a little bit. Next slide. Sorry, it's, it's a little laggy. That's okay. There we go. So the goals of the series. So uh, today obviously is part one, um, but as we go through the series, the six part series, these are our main goals and objectives for this course for you. Um, so we want to improve your lifestyle. We don't want that quick fix approach of, you know, let's lose 10 pounds and then be happy and marry and then gain it all back. We want to make sure we're giving you the tools and skills and knowledge to transform and maintain those healthy eating habits or physical activity habits for your life. So not a quick fix. Hopefully the skills you learn on this program, you'll be able to adapt and change throughout your life. Um, as well, improve confidence and ability to maintain these changes. So again, we're not, we're giving you information that will help you to be more confident in making informed decisions about nutrition. Um, and then feeling healthier. So we want you to feel healthier and be healthier with that knowledge. So we're not going to make you a nutrition plan. We're going to give you that knowledge to do that on your own um, and make those informed decisions for you and your family. As well, um, we're talking about weight here. So goal weight, whatever it is based on yourself. So if it's to gain weight, lose weight, or just maintain the same weight, um, weight really shouldn't be the top priority here. It's more about nutritional needs and nutritional value. So we're coming at this, yes, with a weight lens generally, but um, more so with that healthy mind and body um, approach. So. We'll talk about dieting, we'll talk about losing weight, we'll talk about monitoring that. Um, but more so than that, we're talking about nutrition that you need. So you might be a healthy weight, but you might not be getting the nutrition that you need, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more. So to jump on uh, Mission Nutrition, um, there's kind of three main pillars within our course that we like to focus on. Um, the first one being healthy eating. So we want to talk about what healthy eating is in, in regard to the Canada's Food Guide. Uh, as well within Canada's Food Guide, there's now, um, it's more functional for, for the adult or the Canadian adult. So it's more allowing you to kind of explore with yourself um, and not just focus on the numbers as much and more of a balanced plate approach. Uh, as well, there's a huge emphasis on eating with others, cooking with others, and mindful eating. So that approach to healthy eating as well as a component of that is very important, and we'll touch on that today. Um, next is, is uh, the Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines. So for adults, we're supposed to be getting um, 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per week. Um, so we'll talk about that a lot more in the next session next Tuesday, um, but really getting you to think about, you know, if we're looking at nutrition and a healthy overall uh, body, we want to think about healthy eating, but we also want to think about active learning and they kind of go hand in hand together. Um, and then lastly, we're going to be thinking about positive thinking. So what are our goals for this? What are um, projected outcomes? what potential barriers might we face um, and how can we overcome those barriers. So we're talking about goal setting uh, and this is also gonna be done next week as well, more so. Uh, we'll touch on it a bit today, um, but how can we set realistic goals so that we're not just failing every time and then getting discouraged. So we wanna be maintaining that positive thinking, be able to achieve our goals and move forward. And then why does healthy eating matter? So yeah, we all have heard, you know, eat your fruit and veg. I'm sure we all grew up with that kind of mentality of, you know, the make sure you're drinking milk and all these different things are coming at us from different perspectives. Um, even the generation that we come from can change how we look at healthy eating. Um, but realistically, we, we shouldn't think about healthy eating because of these four things. So if we're looking at disease risk, we know that healthy eating has a huge impact on disease rates in Canada. Um, so if we think about uh, cancer, 
Uh, we know that healthy eating is linked to reducing those risks of cancer in colorectal, breast, endometrium, kidney, and esophagus cancers. And then in addition, we're looking at alcohol use um, that will decrease risk. If you don't drink alcohol, uh, you'll have decreased risk of other cancers as well. Increasing fruit and vegetable consumption can decrease risk of other cancers as well. So we know that the evidence is there to support that if we're eating healthy, we have decreased risk of cancer in some regard. Um, as well, type two diabetes, uh, we know that you know, weight is highly linked to what we eat. Um, so excess weight or weight gain or obesity or being overweight. Um, and then physical inactivity um, often can lead to escalating rates of type two diabetes, which in turn will lead to other things like heart disease or kidney disease, stroke or other infections. Um, and then in, in addition, we know that cardiovascular diseases are highly linked to nutrition. So if we're eating a diet that's high in saturated fat and trans fats, uh, we'll probably have higher likelihood of those disease, diseases such as stroke and um, heart disease. But if we're leaning towards fruit and veg, polyunsaturated fat, uh, less sodium in our diets, then we're going to have reduced blood pressure and reduce those uh, risks associated with these diseases. Um, so if we look at, so that was disease risk. If we look at overall health, um, we know that, you know, what we put into our body is impacting our health. Um, so that could be disease, diseases, but also obesity. Um, so we have to consider that. And we know that nutrition plays a huge role in other parts of our health, not just disease risk. So our energy levels, our mental health, our mood, all are impacted by the ability of the food that we're eating. So we need to think about that for our overall health. Um, in addition, healthy human development. So if we think of a baby, we know, you know the needs of them and nutritionally are, are very different, obviously, than an, an adult. Um, but nonetheless, we need to be thinking about nutrition for ourselves and others over the lifespan. So it's not a one and done fix of let's lose 10 pounds and then I can go back to my old eating habits. It's we need to make these changes over time to make sure that we're aging well and healthy. Um, generally speaking, if we're getting the nutrients from a healthy diet, we'll be uh, good over a long period of time, uh, but there are some age-specific nutritional development things we need to consider as we age. And then lastly is healthy lifestyle. So if we are trying to nutrition, nutritious foods, we're often leading that foundation around a healthy lifestyle. We're then, if we're trying to nutritious foods, we're then trying to physical activity. Maybe we don't uh, use those substances such as alcohol and tobacco as much. So we're leading to a healthier lifestyle overall, uh, which is very important for our overall health. So that's kind of an introduction as to Mission Nutrition, why we're here, why it matters. Um, Jackie's going to take us through some of the Canadian food guide now. Awesome. Thanks, Braden. Um, so yeah, let's kind of switch gears a little bit here and talk about um, Canada Food Guide and some of the changes and um, some of the recommendations that um, are now kind of being uh, a lot more present within kind of this whole food environment that we're that we're talking about. Um, so most people are probably pretty familiar with this food guide, and I'm going to hold up my camera here. Um, the kind of rainbow food guide that. Uh, focuses on your four different food groups and um, how much of each food we should be eating um, every single day. Um, and I know this was at least what I grew up kind of learning and knowing, and it was a very long standing document. Um, I'm, I know there's been a few iterations um, getting to this point. Um, so the new food guide was uh, updated and released in February of 2019, if I have that date right. Um, and it kind of took a step away from the rainbow food guide that we came to kind of know. Um, and really looked more at that whole food environment and the multiple different factors that kind of impact the food that we do eat. Um, it looked at addressing certain challenges that the old guide didn't necessarily um, get into, such as applying the recommendations in everyday life, um, 
healthy meals and snacks and actually kind of putting things all together more so than just numbers and food groups. Um, we also um, ensured like within the new guide that um, the right information was geared towards the right audiences um, and took into consideration special considerations for, uh, for individuals that might not fall into kind of the cookie cutter um, age groups that the, the previous food guide um, outlined there. Um, many, many updates were made um, and basically brought uh, to light a lot of new emerging, um, very evidence-based information to ensure that everything was kind of aligning uh, with the most current evidence. A lot of consultation went into um, preparing it for, for release, um, looking at different um, social determinants of health, environments, cultural diversity, all these types of things were brought into uh, consideration to, to update the, uh, the food guide. So most people, if they haven't seen it already, um, this is what our new food guide kind of looks like, this kind of static image of this very colorful balanced plate here. Um, so what's actually new with the new food guide? We're gonna go through um, the recommendations that have kind of been put forward. Um, but right off the top here, we can kind of see uh, we're not strictly looking at four different food groups anymore, right? So this balanced plate, balance plate approach has really looked at kind of these uh, three different uh, food groups that uh, we didn't eliminate one, we just kind of looked at combining uh, one or uh, two of our food groups from our old food guide here. Um, so really focusing on this balanced plate of um, veggies and fruits, whole grains and protein foods. And we're gonna get into that as we kind of go a little bit here. Um, but just so everyone's aware, if you do visit the Food Guide website, there are a ton of more resources on there, including um, a snapshot, different videos, recipes, all kinds of downloadable information. So it is a lot more comprehensive now, excuse me, than just the previous kind of numbers by food group um, guide that we, um, that we had come to, uh, come to know. So what I'd like to do is just kind of go through the three different recommendations or three different sections that have kind of been developed within the new food guide, just to give you all a bit of a kind of background and update on what um, the new information is that has kind of come forward. So if we're looking at kind of section one, this is our foundation for healthy eating, right? So again, obviously we're not going to uh, steer completely off track of focusing on what we should be, we should be eating in the new, uh, the new food guide. But uh, basically, we're broken down into kind of guidelines with recommendations within each of those. So our first one here, um, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and protein food should be consumed regularly. So this is basically the overarching balanced plate approach. Um, we've been kind of teaching this for, for many, many years, utilizing the, the old food guide and really trying to ensure that we are getting um, more vegetables and fruits within our, our every every meal, um, our lean proteins, and, and switching to whole grains for the variety of different health uh, health benefits. Um, but this has kind of really made that pretty picture of what that balanced plate um, can look like. When we're looking at kind of veggies and fruits, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about um, frozen versus fresh versus canned, all these types of things. Um, what we're really trying to encourage within the new guide is it doesn't really um, matter. A lot of times living in uh, North America, we're not going to have a very long produce season. So we do have to kind of turn to those frozen um, vegetables or fruits. And a lot of times those are frozen at their peak freshness and we're actually getting them with all of their nutrients still um, intact within there. So um, lots of uh, benefits that can come from that. And oftentimes it can be a little bit cheaper as well. Uh, Brayden's gonna get into talking about kind of the costs associated uh, a little bit later in the presentation. Um, and canned vegetables too, right? Uh, biggest recommendation here would just be to give them a, a bit of a rinse. There might be a little bit of excess sodium in that, um, in that fluid in there, but again, you're still getting the nutrients that come from those vegetables and fruits. When we talk about whole grains, uh, we want to make sure that we're choosing whole grains more often than we are choosing potentially white and rich breads, those types of things, white pastas. Um, there's a ton of benefits that come along with that whole grain approach, including increased fiber, a um, whole bunch of more nutrients and things like that. So trying to make those choices a little bit more frequently is uh, what the recommendation is, uh, is stating for us here. So things like quinoa, brown rice, whole grain pastas, 
um, making the switch to some whole grain breads, those types of things um, will increase the nutritional value and kind of give you more bang for your buck in, uh, in those types of foods. Um, when we talk about protein foods, so this is basically where we've seen that meat and alternatives and that milk and alternatives food group kind of combine into one. Um, oftentimes, we're, people are seeing that, oh, they completely eliminated the, uh, the milk uh, and alternatives uh, food group. Um, real, in reality, it was kind of just the combination that has happened there. Um, a few different reasons, a ton of the same benefits we were seeing from different milk and alternatives and meat and alternatives. Um, all of which kind of focus around that that protein piece. So hence the new protein foods, uh, food category there, or food group. Um, when we're talking about this, though, we do want to try and switch to consuming some more plant-based sources of, uh, of protein as well. So there's kind of a variety of different reasons for, for pushing this. Uh, we'll go through just a couple here um, just to kind of emphasize. Um, typically, when we're increasing uh, plant-based uh, sources of protein, we're decreasing the amount of saturated fat that we actually are consuming within our day, daily diets. So obviously, Breeden touched on a ton of different health benefits to uh, a healthy diet, and um, the increase in saturated fat intake is actually one of the, the biggest impacts that we can, we can change to, to increase our, um, or to help our overall, overall health and well-being. So um, increasing that kind of plant-based um, fruit and vegetable consumption, or sorry, protein consumption uh, will aid in kind of the reduction in overall saturated fat intake that we often find in different meat and, and dairy products. That can have a huge impact on kind of those blood cholesterol levels, um, increase or decrease your risk of those type two, of type two diabetes and things like that. So um, a ton of different reasons. Um, it is a little bit cheaper as well if you're switching to kind of some, uh, some legumes or beans, things like that versus, versus your meats. Uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit um, as well. Um, you're also increasing your fiber intake, which has a ton of different health benefits, um, keeping you full a little bit longer, getting a little bit more nutrients um, within your diet as well. So switching to things like legumes, different nuts and seeds and tofus, those have a ton of different proteins within them um, that are going to uh, be very low in saturated fats and still give you that protein uh, requirement that you, uh, you do need. Obviously, if you do eat meat, so if you're not a vegetarian or vegan, uh, recommendations would be to choose some of those leaner uh, cuts of meat, right? So different poultries, things like that. Um, lean red meats, including different wild uh, wild game as well. A lot of that time, those are very uh, very lean cuts of, cuts of meat. Um, and then choosing things that are low fat dairy products as well, right? So different milks, uh, yogurts, cheeses. Um, cheese was one of those big ones where you don't really realize how much <laughs> saturated fat is actually sitting within that uh, that chunk of cheese there. Um, so choosing some of those lower fat options is uh, is kind of what is recommended. Within, uh, within this guideline here. Um, as we talked about already, making the switch from saturated fat containing foods to more unsaturated fat containing foods is, uh, is a huge, uh, huge concern um, and a huge, sorry, a huge recommendation because it is such a concern for our society over consuming different types of um, saturated fats. So generally speaking, we are over consuming the types of fats that we do uh, do not require within our diet and under consuming the ones that we that we need, right? So we really want to up that unsaturated fats uh, intake, which is our good fats. Those are the ones that are actually going to cause an effect on our cholesterol levels um, and actually improve um, our overall health and well-being. While kind of the other fats, so our saturated fats, those are the ones that are really going to cause the damages and lead to all those health risks that uh, we talked a little bit about earlier. Um, so things that we can kind of recommend here is if you're cooking your foods, choosing um, different olive oils versus butters and things like that. Um, the one key trick that I like to, to share with everyone on how to tell the difference is if our um, saturated fats versus our unsaturated fats um, and their uh, state at room temperature. 
So if your liquid, uh, if your fat is liquid at room temperature, generally speaking, it's going to be an unsaturated fat versus a solid at room temperature. That's going to be more of your saturated fat. So that's your things like your butters, um, that kind of fat cap on, on different meats and things like that. So obviously trying to reduce that as, as much as possible is, uh, is what we're trying to aim for here. Obviously we'll get into kind of the moderation talk in a little bit, but um, trying to make some healthier choices in reducing that saturated fat intake is, uh, is what we kind of recommend here as well. And to go along with that, uh, it's a little more overwhelming in terms of saying a lot of terms, saturated fats, polyunsaturated, all these things are kind of overwhelming. Um, not next week, but the week after, we're actually going to go through each uh, macronutrient, all these different terms that you might hear uh, when you want to try and eat healthier, um, and we'll kind of explain them in more depth. So some a question that was asked was, where does butter fit? And then you answered the question, but that might be a good uh a good thing to see or come to in two yeah. weeks uh, to help you understand that a little bit more. Awesome. Thanks, Brayden. It is a lot. The nutrition is one of those things where you can, uh, I know at least myself, I can kind of just ramble on and on and on about it for, for quite a while. So if anyone does have any questions, please pop them in there. We're more than happy to answer where, where we can. Um, the last guideline within kind of this first section is um, putting the emphasis on the beverages that we drink and really trying to make sure that water is our beverage of choice. So um, there's a ton, ton, ton of reasons why water is so important and why we should be getting um, adequate um, water throughout, uh, throughout our day, obviously to keep us hydrated, a variety of other reasons. Um, but we want to try and make sure that we're, we're switching out some of those maybe sugar sweetened beverages for for water with, uh, with a squeeze of lemon or things like that to give it a little bit of flavor um, to reduce kind of some of those empty calories, that excess sugar intake, um, and all of those other things that kind of can be put into different uh, flavored, uh, flavored beverages. So switching to um, some water versus the juice is, is the, hot, the biggest recommendation here. Um, but making sure that we are getting the adequate fluid intake throughout the day is, uh, is kind of the, the precedence here. So um, it, whether it's low fat milk, um, coffees or teas, obviously in moderation because of caffeine, um, but still getting that fluid intake is, uh, is super important uh, here and water whenever we can. So. All right, so we'll move into guideline two. Um, so guideline two within the Canvas Food Guide is all around uh, processed foods or prepared foods. So today, I want you to I, I want you to think about your normal day to day life. Um, we'll often, generally speaking, we'll often go to drive throughs to pick up you know a quick fix if we're running late uh, uh, to work maybe you know go to Tim Hortons and pick up a breakfast sandwich or whatever it might be. Um, and then maybe when we get home, we're turning to those frozen meals, prepared meals, maybe taking our family out to dinner or bringing takeout in for that quick fix of a meal. So I would say generally we're turning to processed or prepared foods a lot more than we should be. Um, and that's kind of one of Health Canada's recommended, recommendations is, is surrounding this. So being mindful of how much processed or prepared foods we are eating and trying to minimize those when we can. Um, so not turning to that maybe prepare, already prepared PC brand frozen lasagna or pizza, and instead we're making our own from scratch and maybe freezing it and taking it out on a busy night, um, things like that. As we know, prepared or processed foods are very high in sodium, sugars, and saturated fats which are not good for our overall health and lead to disease risk. So um, trying to avoid those as much as possible is really, really important for our overall health. Um, so highly processed foods can include things like sugary drinks, like Jackie just talked about, um, chocolates and candies, those ice creams or frozen desserts, um, any kind of fast food items you can think of, french fries, burgers, pizza, um, frozen entrees from the grocery store, bakery items, you name it, list goes on and on. Um, sausages as well, any kind of processed meats, so deli meats have a lot of uh, process or are prepared. Um, so tips to kind of steer away from these things are trying to avoid having prepared food or processed food in your house as much as possible. 
So if I'm turning to deli meats often, maybe I, instead I'm cooking extra chicken breast with dinner the night before so I can have a chicken breast sandwich instead of that deli meat. Or maybe I'm, you know, meal prepping on the weekend to make muffins instead of going to, um, instead of going to the Tim Hortons drive through to get a prepared muffin. Um, maybe choosing healthier options when we're eating out. So choosing those more uh, fresh ingredients uh, instead of going for that burger and fries at the time. Um, what else? Um, stocking our kitchens with healthy foods instead of those saturated or processed foods, such as chips and maybe some granola bars, things like that. Steering away from that and maybe turning to fruit, fresh fruit, uh, carrots or veggies um, of some kind, maybe hard boiled eggs or nuts or seeds, things like that that are less processed. There's just a question that came in there about um, certain deli meats. So um, is there any deli meats that are um, that are OK? Uh, recommendation would be if you're trying to if you can do a little bit of research, just try and find some of those lower fat um, deli meats. So even if you are choosing deli meats, things like turkey breast, um, chicken breast, things that don't have excess sodium. That's a big one that we we do see a lot of excess sodium being added in there. So things with natural spices versus a lot of those preservatives uh, would kind of be the recommendation. Um, and to try um, try mixing it up a little bit, right? So as Braden said, maybe it's not a deli a deli meat sandwich every um, every day for lunch. You could try just veggies or or try some of those um, those whole uh, cooked uh, meat products again as well mm -hmm. or turning to champagne as well um, i know one of my favorite lunches is black bean and sweet potato patties that i make in the oven so that's one of the things that you can turn to that you're avoiding those processed foods a little more often um, along with that kind of the guideline also steers towards um, sticking away from those sugary drinks those sugary drinks or substances that we often consume, um, as well the alcohol. So along with alcohol, uh, we tend to mix sugary substances, maybe liqueurs, um, maybe different uh, sugars or, or salt. Um, so if we're looking at alcohol, it really has no nutritional value for us. Um, so that's a lot of excess calories that we're getting very limited nutritional value added. In addition, we're probably adding sodium, sugars, or saturated fats with the things that we're mixing into it, not even like the beverage that we're mixing, but also you turn to, you know, those higher salt snacks when you're drinking alcohol. Um, so just being mindful of those things uh, that aid in the development of disease are very important. And that's one thing that Canada's food guide is kind of steering us away from is, is being mindful of that and, and Yes, consume in moderation, but be, just be mindful of what you're, you're um, drinking or consuming. Along with that, the last point there about food and beverages being offered in public spaces, um, being aligned with Canvas Food Guide. So if we're going out uh, to a cafeteria or on base or wherever, you know, um, there should be available options that align with Canvas Food Guide that are healthy options for you. So we're still getting those quick meals, maybe if you're running a long time, but there's still that healthy option available, um, which is very, very important. Awesome. Um, let's talk quickly about guideline three. Um, this one is probably one of my favorite additions to the new food guide as it puts a lot more emphasis on, as I mentioned earlier, kind of that whole food environment in which we live in versus just really getting the numbers per food group as the old guide uh, really focused on. So if we're able to kind of build the skills that we need to kind of help us navigate this food network, we're going to have a much higher likelihood of being successful in healthy eating. Um, a few of the recommendations that they put, um, put within here are um, cooking and preparing foods um, at home, right? So you're able to understand a lot more about what's going into stuff, how foods are prepared, where there might be um, hidden different fats and excess calories added in pre prepared foods or foods at restaurants and things like that. Um, being able to understand that a little bit more by, by putting the effort in uh, on your end can be hugely beneficial. 
um, and food labels. So being able to fully understand food labels as a tool for making healthy choices, being able to effectively kind of compare um, your food choices when you are in the grocery store, that's super important. So increasing that food literacy is, um, is going to be hugely beneficial in trying to improve those, um, those healthy choices that you do make. And we will be exploring, we'll be spending a whole session in a couple of weeks on really diving into what food labels um, are telling us and how to better understand them. The food guide basically breaks down four different kind of recommendations within this food, uh, within this guideline to, to kind of help increase that, that food literacy and look beyond food, right? So um, it was actually March was Nutrition Month and the theme was uh, more than food, right? So really looking at different eating habits, more than the food that we actually are putting on our plate, but what does the environment around us look like? And these are kind of some of the recommendations that they look at here. So being a little bit more mindful of our eating habits, um, as Brayden mentioned earlier, we're already in this super fast paced society, uh, usually, maybe things have slowed down for people a little bit lately, but we don't usually take the time to eat. We're usually kind of grab and go. Uh, we don't even notice when we're hungry or full anymore because we're just getting the food into us because we know we have 17 things to do before we have to go to bed at night after we get home from work. So if we can be a little bit more mindful of uh, of the food that we're eating. It'll help us be a little bit more cognizant of how much food we actually need. Um, it actually takes about 20 minutes for our brains to recognize from our stomach that it's full. So I don't know too many people who take more than maybe 10, 15 minutes to eat a meal. Um, and by that time, your stomach hasn't even sent the signal to your brain that it could be full. Um, so being a little bit more um, methodical on how we eat um, will help us better understand our, our full cues and also when we when we recognize that we're hungry as well. Cook more often. Um, I talked about this already, but putting a little bit more planning and preparation into the meals that we eat. Um, enjoying your food. This one's another, another big one, right? Kind of goes in, along with being mindful. Oftentimes you're just eating the food because you have to, you're not really enjoying the different flavors that are in there. So this is really an opportunity to kind of explore um, different recipes. Um, if you're eating the same thing day in and day out, you're probably going to get pretty bored of it and not even really enjoy that mealtime anymore. So putting more emphasis on the, the enjoyment that can be part of that process and eating meals with others. So um, obviously if we're sitting down uh, with someone and having a conversation, we're going to be slowing how fast we're eating anyway, which will probably help us with being a little bit more mindful. Um, but I think we've lost touch with kind of that family mealtime that uh, used to be so, so important and uh, trying to bring that back. There's a ton of, uh, of health benefits beyond just even um, the nutritional benefits of eating meals with others, but the catching up, the mental health aspect of, of all of this is, is huge. So beyond just the food that we're putting on our plates, looking at the whole environment is super important. Um, and I really enjoy that they've added this component to the new food guide to try and be a little bit more in touch with kind of that human factor when it comes to preparing meals, eating meals, putting the work in to try and make sure that we're being um, as healthy as we can be. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to talk about another kind of uh, consideration of Canvas food guide. Um, yes, it is hard to eat mindfully and very, very challenging in our society today. I see a comment here. Um, you know, uh, we oftentimes turn to the eat at the sofa and watch TV while we're eating dinner or, you know, eating while we're driving to work. Um, but taking that time and planning and preparing a little more will do wonders for that. Um, okay, so does it cost more to he eat healthy? Oh, no. I will keep going. I'm sure Jackie will come back. Um, it's only one slide that I'll talk about for the next few minutes anyway. Um, so eating healthy really um, can be budget friendly. Um, oftentimes people think that that grocery store bill uh, will go up if we're um, turning to those high, those fruit and veg, um, but it doesn't have to. She just texted me and said she lost connection. So hopefully she can come back in. Um, okay, so generally speaking, if we want to eat healthy, there are cost benefits to that um, in terms of 
how to save money, you can buy in season fruit and vegetables. So, or if they're on sale. So choosing those, you know, what, what's in stock right now, what's locally grown, how can I get this more, um, more cheaper as opposed to buying those like exotic fruit and veg that are often very expensive. So being mindful of that as well, knowing when things go on sale. So making sure you're looking in the flyers, making sure you're planning and preparing for your grocery store visit. Welcome back. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, making sure that you're planning and preparing for that grocery store visit, very, very important. Um, as well, making sure that you, you know, there's apps out there to know what is available when. Um, there's even, you know, cost comparison apps where you can type in like, I need, um, you know, carrots, and it'll show you the cheapest grocery store as well as some grocery stores price match. So being mindful of that. Uh, as well, bring a grocery list and stick to it. So I try to, you know, write down everything that I want for my grocery st store when I go to the grocery store that I've prepared that I know will not go to waste because I've meal planned or prepared, know what I'm going to cook. And then I'm only grabbing those items. So I'm not going down the chip aisle because I know I don't need those chips. Um, I'm just kind of going to where I need to go and I'm getting out of there. Another tip I like to use is not going to the grocery store hungry. Uh, if I'm hungry, I'm way more apt to buy things that are not on that grocery list. Um, as well, try and get to know the layout of your store. So you kind of, if you're thinking about your grocery store right now, uh, generally speaking, all the fresh produce is on the outside of the store. So you've got the, the vegetables and fruit as soon as you walk in. And then going along the back wall is your meat and alternatives. Um, and then dairy on the side. So, so being mindful of that and planning your route within the grocery store to avoid some of those uh, higher processed foods that are um, going to rack up your bill a little bit more than if you just focus on the healthy, nutritious food. Um, another tip is to make meatless meals. So um, oftentimes you can get uh, high protein foods for a very low price. So not turning to those, um, maybe those Yves products or uh, vegetarian or vegan substitutes, but instead focusing on those legumes, those beans, uh, those lentils that are very, very low cost, but you're getting that high protein content with low saturated fat. So it's a win-win-win essentially. Um, so choosing those more meatless plant-based proteins when you can, uh, very affordable. Um, also one thing I like to do is compare products. So the other day, I think I was buying raisins, um, and one product was this exact same price as the other, but there was almost half a kilo more or half a pound more of, uh, raisins in this one no name product than the brand name product. So being mindful of weight and how that plays a, a role as well. Um, lastly, or a few more, I guess, um, look for uh, low and high shelf levels. So when you go to the grocery store, you're being marketed to. Um, try to avoid the middle section because that's where the grocery store will put their more expensive foods and look for the higher and lower on the shelf, which is where they'll put more of their cheaper products of the exact same uh, product. So lentils, you know, you're going to get your brand name lentils here and then maybe you're cheaper above. So being mindful of that. Um, and then obviously choose to um, go with frozen or canned vegetables if that's cheaper option for you in the moment. Um, and then try and cook in batches so cook in bulk so that you're freezing items that are later ready to prepare. So very easy to prepare um, and that you already have bought in everything in season when it's the cheapest. So I have, I think, two lasagnas in my freezer that I made a couple of, of maybe a month ago now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, where I bought a lot of produce that was very cheap. Uh, I made it a vegetarian lasagna, so it has no meat in it, so that's another cost saving, um, and then that low fat dairy as well. So making sure that you're being mindful and freezing items as need be.
And then to wrap up the Canda Food Guide. Um, so generally, the Canda Food, Canda's Food Guide is an online suite of resources. If you Google it, you'll see a million and one resources available to you um, surrounding uh, Canda's Food Guide and healthy eating. So there really is no shortage of resources available for the general public or healthcare professionals or whoever you are. Um, it's based on solid foundation of evidence. So uh, there's a whole team of, uh, to back up this evidence of healthcare professionals, dietitians. Um, so this is really foundational uh, research that we should be using to benefit our life. And then it's really shifting to more actionable advice. So that mindful eating, eating with others, cooking more often, um, making water the drink of choice, things like that are very attainable in our life today, as well as, you know, not having to count, okay, now I've got eight fruit and vegetables I need. It's more about that balanced plate approach, which is very, very important for us today to be able to action everything that we're All right, let's switch gears here and talk a little bit about diets. So as we said at the beginning of the presentation, um, when we talk about our mission nutrition program as a whole, we're really looking at healthy eating, physical activity, and that positive mindset. Nowhere in there does it mention sticking to a strict diet to achieve any of our results. Um, and we'll talk about in the next couple slides um, the rationale as to why that's not something that we want to promote. We really want to focus on that lifestyle type um, choices, right? So um, looking at our, our whole kind of approach to, to this whole food, healthy lifestyle, well-being, all of those different components, bringing that all together so that we're not having to be very prescriptive um, to, to the foods that, that, we are, um, that we are eating, right? Um, if we look at kind of this diet versus lifestyle, uh, this table kind of breaks down looking at different kind of, if we look at maybe fad diets versus lifestyle, right? So um, for duration, um, with a diet, it's usually a short term kind of quick fix. There's usually a time related um, component to it, right? So lose 10 pounds in 10 days, as we mentioned before, uh, whereas that lifestyle is more of that longer term um, it's endless, right? Like we want to make sure that these are things that we're, we're doing every single day. Um, the change, we're usually looking at some sort of calorie restriction when we're looking at, at a diet or nutrient restriction. When we want to talk about the lifestyle, we really want to try and encourage changing behaviors. It's not necessarily cutting certain things out to get, to get our goal. Um, it's more so the behaviors that, that we can learn to, um, to try and ensure that we, we achieve our desired results. Um, that kind of touches on that goal piece, right? I'd say 99 to 100% of diet claims that are out there uh, focus on, on weight loss, right? And it usually has to do with um, some extremes. So um, by cutting this, you'll receive these results in a very short period of time. Um, when we look at kind of more of those lifestyle choices, this goes along with behaviors, but we want to build the skills and knowledge that can be applied into our day-to-day -day activities so we don't have to follow this very prescriptive um, set of guidelines for us to achieve, um, achieve our goals. And then when we look at long-term results, we'll get to this in a second here, but oftentimes when we're looking at fad diets or something that's super restrictive, there's going to be a rebound um, and we're going to probably gain back some weight that we, that we lost, potentially even gain more because we are in such a restricted state. When we're talking about lifestyle, we're really talking about building those healthy habits, um, making sure that these are behaviors and skills that we can apply to our day-to-day -day that are going to allow us to um, achieve our goals in a healthy fashion um, and have kind of that health and weight maintenance versus be being very strict and prescriptive. So obviously we wanna try and lean towards this whole lifestyle piece without falling into kind of that category of, um, of a diet. Um, or something that might be marketed as, as a quick fix. When we talk about yo-yo dieting, this is kind of where we get into talking about all of the different, I don't know, fad diets that might be out there. Um, I just want to take a second and just see what people's thoughts are. Um, when I say fad diet or, or a diet that might come to mind, put that into the chat box here and let's just see what kind of pops up. Um, in terms of what people have maybe tried or heard of, um, and we'll we'll see what uh, 
what kind of comes to mind when we hear that. My chat's being a little bit laggy, so if stuff does pop in, Braden, let me know. Nope. Nothing? All right. <laughs> Oftentimes we're... We've got keto. Yeah, Weight Watchers, keto, restricting bread, sugar, milk, um, things like um, Atkins, things like Isogenics, things like um, anything where basically you're being sold something or being told that you have to buy this product. Um, those are some of those key claims that may be made about the diet that are a bit of a red flag. Um, basically, when we're talking about these types of diets, they're not going to be reflective of your usual habits. There's going to be some sort of prescription of following this guideline to achieve these results. What's going to happen is you're going to start ignoring your natural hunger and your feeling of being full, right? So um, it is okay to be hungry at times, but um, being able to kind of fully ignore that is not the recommendation here. Um, with that, um, when we often are seeing fluctuations in our in our weights, um, this can actually cause our um, metabolism to slow down, which causes our bodies to actually be more efficient at storing fat. Right? We uh, we don't really know when that next satisfying meal is going to be coming, so our bodies get really good at at slowing um, at slowing our metabolism and storing fat. Um, and those weight fluctuations are not really healthy for us, right? We really want to focus on that weight maintenance or that very controlled uh, weight loss piece. And I like this last point on here. It's often um, we don't fail, but the diet fails us, right? Something within that is too prescriptive and it's going to be very uh, restrictive and not let us um, really have that integration into that lifestyle because oftentimes it's unattainable. This slide here really kind of demonstrates what that cycle of yo-yo dieting can look like, right? So as we just spoke about, when we're really restricting our diets, we might really see a drop in, um, in our weight. We might see that scale really showing a reduction in our weight loss. After a certain period of time, though, because we're not sticking to our regular habits, we're depriving ourselves of, of certain things, we're going to fall into maybe that state of uh, deprivation to the extreme. We might um, have a cheat day and then we'll get super frustrated with ourselves because we put all this hard work in and then uh, we had this one thing and now um, we're frustrated because we've undone all the work that we've done and then that, that cheat day turns into a cheat weekend and then um, you're super frustrated still so you just keep going and then you've eventually given up on what you've um, set your mind to in terms of sticking to that diet plan. Um, you're going to feel guilty because you didn't stick to it. It's going to lead to low self-esteem and the cycle continues, right? So this is what we really want to avoid. This is what's really kind of been kind of ingrained in that whole mindset of um, we have to be fitting these perfect cookie cutter images of what society tells us we have to look like. We don't want to go there. We really want to focus on the positives of building a healthy foundation, making sure that we have a healthy lifestyle and trying to avoid falling into these fads of making basically a very restrictive type diet um, and, and not being happy with the food that we eat. We talked about that within the food guide too, right? We want to make sure that we can get what we need nutritionally wise, but also enjoy the time that we have together eating foods that we enjoy, right? So yo-yo um, dieting is really just a fluctuation in weight that we want to avoid uh, for a variety of different uh, different reasons, and uh, and really try and focus more on building a lifestyle and a foundation. With that being said, Brian's going to take you through a couple points for planning for success before we kind of wrap things up here for uh, for today, and uh, and we'll get into this more in the next few weeks. All right. So so really. The opposite of fad dieting, you know, that you kind of already alluded to, is that skill building, knowing the having the knowledge to make informed decisions, and how do we do that for planning for our success? So we really need to evaluate evaluate where we are and how ready we are to take on these changes. Um, we can talk to you all about over the six weeks about nutrition, but it's really on you and how ready you are to make those changes. We're talking about behavior modification here. Um, so it's really, we're, we're, we're talking about you making changes in your life. So how ready are you for that? 
um, and we'll send out uh, part of your homework is to take kind of a quiz about how ready you are, ready are you to do that. As well, set realistic goals for yourself. So one thing with fad diets they often do is set very unrealistic goals that are very, very hard to achieve, very restrictive. Um, instead, we wanna set realistic goals for ourselves to better our overall health, not just surrounding our, our self image, so that weight, but more importantly, the health of ourselves. So maybe I wanna eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, so how do I do that? By, by setting realistic goals of, okay, I'm gonna add one more leafy green vegetable into my dinner every single night, whatever that might look like, whatever your goal looks like. Um, we'll talk about next week what realistic goals are um, and how to achieve them and, and, and how to make a good one. Um, and another one is uh, find support. So I'm turning to the people I live with, maybe the people I frequently go to dinner with or I'm eating with, um, maybe my coworkers, my friends, that can support me through this. If I say that I want to change my behavior and turn to a healthier lifestyle, maybe they'll support me through that and help me along with that. Um, as well, practice these skills. It's not going to happen overnight. You can't just learn something and, and be good. It takes a long time to practice this content. Um, and then make healthy habits for life. Uh, we're talking about not a quick fix here, but a longevity. So four steps to uh, more so eating healthy or to be a healthier individual is to eat regularly, aim for the right balance of food, so that balanced plate approach. Um, track your food intake for a couple of days or a week to make, to make note of where you're eating, how much you're eating, what you're eating, to get a better understanding because we might not be aware of what we're actually putting into our bodies. And then start taking those steps, start walking, start getting outside, um, aim for a, a, a baseline number that you're achieving every single day. Um, okay, so for next week, we will be talking about physical activity, body composition, and goal setting. Um, to help you kind of in your next week from now until then, I'm gonna hand out some resources for you. Um, so this resource that I just handed out is surrounding, you know, are, am I ready to make this change for myself? And then those four things I just talked about. So eating regular meals, um, what are the benefits to that? How do I become more active? How can I introduce that into my um, daily routine? Things like that. How do I track my food? Just become mindful of these things as we go through the week, as you go through the week, and start doing these things so that next week you can build on the things that you've learned this week. I'll also share a checklist for choosing a weight loss program. So we know there's a million and one diets out there. Uh, here's a little sheet to help you become more informed about the decisions you're making. Um, obviously a lifestyle approach is is the best way to go about losing weight or maintaining weight or whatever your goal is. Um, but here's some tips on how to choose a weight loss program that's best for you. It really gets into looking at what those red flags might be and some things to consider before um, signing up or joining or um, listening to this uh, nutrition expert who's really just a consultant selling a product, right? So um, it digs into that a little bit more and really focuses more on building that lifestyle and those skills versus following a very prescriptive type, type uh, diet there. So just to wrap things up here a little bit, sorry, things are a little bit laggy on my end. Um, a few resources that we do want to recommend is for you to check out Canada's Food Guide. Um, this is a, like we said, a suite of a ton of different stuff, different recipes, videos, all kinds of things, recommendations. It digs into a lot more to do with nutrients and understanding and provides really user-friendly type information. So give that a check. Um, and then unlockfood.ca, this um, is basically the Dietitians of Canada website that has a ton of meal planning options. Um, you can connect with a dietitian. There's a ton of other resources um, and great links on there uh, as well. Uh, a lot of interactive type components that we would highly recommend.
Um, on the screen, you'll also notice a few different uh, resources that are available for, uh, for the CAF and CAF uh, family members. Um, if you are interested in any of those um, or have any other further questions related to, to those or accessing help or resources, please feel free to reach out to, um, to any of the uh, PSP team or um, CAF members and uh, we can support you in uh, getting those, uh, those resources available. And I know we have gone a few minutes over here, but uh, I know it was a lot of information to take in today, but we want to we do appreciate you joining us and kind of going through the food guide and a little bit to do with diets. Um, please join us next week as we'll get into a lot more information related to physical activity, as Brayden mentioned, um, and that goal setting component. Um, if anyone does have further questions related to anything we've talked about today, as we mentioned, please feel free to, uh, to reach out. Um, maybe I will put the uh our well, i don't have access to the chat anymore because for whatever reason my computer kicked me out um right if you want to just put maybe the email address in there uh that would be awesome if anyone does have any other sure. questions sure. otherwise uh yeah we should be good i'm not sure if people are seeing the two handouts are for our homework right now the two handouts for homework uh i would say they are not homework but uh, <laughs> beneficial for you to do so and um, they're kind of key takeaways from today that you can start working on um, for yourself yeah. <laughs> and are people seeing the handouts I see a couple comments in there that they're not able to see them uh, Justine if you go to the top there's a button that says check around the chat room and then handouts uh, is at the top you resend it Mm -hmm. Awesome. Otherwise, uh, any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat now. Um, if not, thank you very much for tuning in. The buttons disappeared, oh, chat no. poll, etc. Oh no. I'm not sure how to remedy that. Let me see if I can reshare this. Few people are getting them, a few people aren't. Ah. Okay, there's one I just saw pop through on my end. Yeah. Just appeared. Awesome. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Justine. <laughs> Appreciate that. So we'll let this uh we'll keep this up for just a quick minute here so that you can grab those handouts. And if anyone does have any other questions, please feel free to to let us know. But yeah, appreciate everyone's time today. I know it was a lot. Uh, hopefully you can join us next week and uh, we'll keep this uh, keep this rolling. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.